Good morning, sports fans. You guys are getting a lesson delivered via screencast today. And what you're going to learn is uh, animation techniques, which uh, involve keyframes in Final Cut. And um, let's get started. Uh, first of all, what you should do is head over to Chrome. We have to find a couple things online that we can save and work with in Final Cut. And so you're going to want to open a new tab. And by the way, if you're new to screencasting, which I don't know how many of you are, you can pause this at any time and go back and do the activity. So it's kind of hard to play <clears throat> play around with your screen real estate in a screencast sometimes. So you might want to tear this window away too and I'll watch it in a smaller window. Anyhow, what I want to do is look first of all for a Halloween background, okay? And so um, you can do an image search, uh, however you want to do your search here. Um, I went with this one earlier, right? And uh, to save a background, take your mouse and right click, you can do save image as. And for now, I'm just gonna put it on the desktop. So whether you go with the same one I do, or a different one, doesn't make any difference, but get yourself a Halloween background, all right? So I'm gonna call this Halloween BG on my desktop. Next thing you need is a ghost, okay? And I was trying really hard earlier to find a ghost that was transparent. And so in a new tab, I'm gonna look up transparent background ghost. Okay, so a ghost that has a transparent background behind it, okay? Um, when you do a search, notice you can do an image search here. And I would look for ones that have checkerboard behind them. And if I could find the one I had before, it worked. Not all of them have that checkerboard behind them that we would need in Final Cut. Otherwise, you're going to see that ugly white square behind your ghost. This guy, I believe, will work. Yep. He's got a checkerboard. So what I'm going to do is take this guy, right click on him and save the image also on my desktop. So I'll just call this ghost. Okay, I'm done in Chrome. So next we fire up Final Cut and you're going to have to go in and create a brand new um, project and then import these two graphics into it so we can begin the keyframing process. Uh, so yeah, keyframing is a fun thing to do. It's a little tricky in Final Cut, so we're going to keep it simple today. We're going to do a simple linear motion using keyframes and then maybe uh, add a little bit of um, irregularity to it like a ghost would fly. So anyhow, I'm going to do a new project and call this thing, first of all, I'm going to save it as Halloween animation you can do the same where you put it is up to you might as well put it in documents so I'm consistent and then I'm going to rename my sequence as ghost uh, ghost in motion all right then I have to import my two files so um, you can poke a hole in your desktop and go find these things or since I have so much on my desktop, it's a train wreck. I'm going to import files. It's another way to bring your files in. So the reason I'm doing it this way is because I can sort them by date modified. And I know that there's my ghost and there's my Halloween background. So either way, okay, what you want to do is open up your Halloween background, first of all. And it should be 10 seconds in length. Mine was shorter because I had changed a preference before. So... And uh, just drop that in track one, okay? When you do that, you're, you may notice if you have the same background I chose that it doesn't fill the whole viewable area, right? Remember that outer teal box? So I'm gonna click on my graphic in the timeline, the background. In my canvas, make sure the wireframe is turned on, right? If it's not, if I click in my canvas and it's not turned on, I'm tapping W on my keyboard, right? W is Shortcut for activating the wireframe. And the reason I do that is because I want to stretch this full screen. I can also hide that little watermark. Okay. 
Now what I want to do is to put my ghost into track two. So I'm going to move the target up to track two, make sure it's connected, and load up my ghost. And he too should be uh, 10 seconds in length. I think for the animation, if you make him, uh, I can go 10, why not? Okay, it'll be a, a simple overwrite then. When we take this and put him into track two, my playhead wasn't at the beginning. If your playhead's at the beginning, you won't have to do that twice like I did. Otherwise, you can click the ghost and move them down. But what I want to do now is to resize my ghost. And you may have to do the same with your ghost. I don't know what ghost you chose or how big he looks. And uh, I'm going to position him over here. Hit him up in the sky. Okay. Now when we do this animation part, if you follow the steps, hopefully you won't have any difficulty, right? But job number one in this animation, take your playhead, bring it back to the beginning of the sequence. Why? Because when you keyframe, you have to teach the computer where you want the ghost at what point in time. Okay, so at this point in time, I want my ghost over here. And to teach the computer that he's going to move, there's a little diamond button right here that we're going to click. And it's very important before you click the diamond that you have the ghost selected in the timeline. Notice dark brown round clip. All right, I'm gonna click the diamond and point out that the wireframe turns green. That's Final Cut's way of telling you that you have now created a keyframe or you are sitting on an existing keyframe. Okay, step two, move playhead to end of clip. Okay, I just dragged it. Notice, no more keyframe on the ghost, right? That means you're not sitting on an existing keyframe or you did not create a keyframe. Step three, move ghost. And you should see a line, purple line that goes with you. All right, that indicates you've created an animation. Now, if I take my playhead back, right? and I watch my animation, right? There goes our ghost, okay? Now what we would like to do is create a little bit of uh, movement from our ghost so it's not just linear, right? And we can do that by um, really moving your playhead along so it's kind of out of the way here. But each of these little purple dots, they're almost like speed bumps, okay? Uh, can be clicked. If you put your pointer on them, you'll notice your pointer turns into a pen, right? A lot like you did when you keyframed audio or maybe video transparency. But what you want to do is just take uh, these speed bumps. You can take every one of them or you can randomly do them, right? I'm going to do every one for the first few keyframes. And when you click on the speed bump, uh, you can drag it uh, downward, okay? Or maybe you want to click one and drag it up. Okay, we're going to go every other. Down. Okay. Go here. Go here. Here. And this is kind of nice because, you know, kind of does mimic the way a ghost flies, irregular. So if I watch this, I kind of scrub through it. There goes my ghost, okay? So any of these uh, keyframes can be edited so that your ghost has that kind of flight path. So now if I watch it, there he goes. A new animation with a little twist, okay? Now your job to finish this assignment up is to head out to a website and find some kind of background, spooky noise, music maybe. Put that into uh, your audio tracks and export and turn into Google Classroom. So um, what I like to do is use my go-to guy and that is Sound Bible. Should have done this before when we were getting our graphics. But Sound Bible has free sound effects and I haven't rehearsed this, so I'm gonna go do a search 
for spooky. Maybe just spooky. Okay. Creepy background. What's this? There we go. Or you can do a search for ghost. I don't know. I don't know what that would bring us, but uh, squeaking door, monster roar, grim reaper, your soul. That's kind of scary. <laughs> Sp scary. Spooky chains. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Halloween monster. <laughs> no, not what I wanted. Spooky. <laughs> nah. Not what I was after either, but find something that works for you and uh, download it, right? How do you download it in Psalm Bible? Anybody remember? Um, <laughs> if I go back to the previous page I was on where I had had creepy background, that's the one I want. So if I click on it after previewing it, I'm going to download the wave, right? You can download an MP3 too, but I think a wave has a better chance of not having to render. So... When I click on it, it downloads. That's going on in the background. And I'm going to quit Chrome because my download is done. And if I go to the Finder, I open the Finder window. In Downloads, I will find my creepy background wave. And I can drag it from there into Final Cut. Whoops, I missed. And then from there, I can load it. Play it as long. Yikes. Okay, now I know I don't need that much of it. So what I'll do is in my timeline, I'll mark an in and an out, a classic three-point edit in the timeline. Can't see my in point. It's kind of hiding back there. And if I do an overwrite, there's my sound bite, which now, remember, we can use our line, uh, line graph tool, the one I call it, and then the pen tool and keyframe your audio so it fades, right? So now, there's my movie. And I can even keyframe my ghost so he disappears at the end. That would be kind of cool. Like the, the opacity anyway. You can play around the opacity if you're feeling especially creative with your ghost and you want to make him come in and out of the shot with a kind of fun to play <laughs> with a little varied Capacity. If you drop it down to nothing, you'll disappear altogether. All right. So anyway, we're having fun. Okay, it's up to you now to go through those steps to get this into Google Classroom. Export. Convert to MPEG-4 after you export it. Right? File. Export. QuickTime Movie. Put that on your desktop. Then go to step two. And that part's outlined on the board step two is okay so all right it got lengthy but hope you had fun adios see you tomorrow